It's a pleasure to welcome you to this short film, which has been made to mark a very important occasion. It's a significant landmark when Ulster Museum is acquiring 14 pieces from the collection. Conflict Textiles originated in 2007 and now includes over 400 documented pieces and 250 documented events. Maybe if I begin by talking about one of the pieces in the collection, which is called No to Pollution, No Contaminar. This is a piece that was made in Chile in the early 1980s, and it shows people in the shanty town of San Diego going about their everyday life, uh, but struggling with the effects of smog and pollution. People are protesting and demanding a change. As always, we can see that it's the poor who have been affected most by this pollution and the impacts on their health are very serious. The first pieces I acquired of Chilean arpilleras was in 1975 in Chile, while I was there, in solidarity with the women. That made me come close to them and that put me close to their suffering for the disappeared and imprisoned and exiled people. I really realized that there were people who were not willing to give a testimony in front of questions and answers or interviews. They had different ways to express themselves. The first exhibition was in 2008, and it was called The Art of Survival. Irish and international quilts, and we brought a full collection from Germany, from the Women's Museum, and we created a map. And to see the pieces, you had to go around the whole city. But interesting enough, the pieces that were done by the Catholic community, I placed in Protestant areas, so that we could really experience to visit the pieces and not be so divided Speaking about the textiles, I know you wanted to say something about Dove Woman. It was made in the 1980s during the war in Peru. Two women did their own piece that they didn't do for selling. <laughs> and one of them was Dove Woman. So it had a very symbolic um, feeling of a woman who felt trapped in her circumstance. The first thing we did was the RPR doll making workshop, which was a really hands-on activity. And at the same time, we were developing the Troubles and Beyond exhibition, which opened in 2018. And for me, again, it was that visual representation of the impact of the Troubles in terms of loss of life. The online archive was rebranded, made more accessible to people, more easily searchable. It has really brought the pieces worldwide, you know, so people who would never maybe have access to the physical pieces, say academics, researchers, families of the disappeared, communities. You can drill down from exhibition to one particular piece that was in it. You can drill down from a textile to where it was made and what the maker thought about it. And Breach, I think there was one piece you wanted to tell us a little bit about. The Africa quilt, and that was made in 2009. It was made by a man, a young quilt maker. He designed it with Polly Eaton from England. And that really highlights the whole devastation and destruction of Africa's natural resources. There's been a lot of goods and trade coming from Africa to the West primary natural resources, and there's been then a trickle of aid flowing back if you were to compare the two. So the scales have been very unevenly balanced. So it's a very striking piece.
So we're really delighted to have Conflict Textiles as a partner in the Inclusive Global Histories exhibition as well. This is the first time we've displayed the textiles outside the context of the Troubles and Beyond initiative and it just shows how this partnership can link across a number of our priority areas. It's done in a very human and very poignant and very powerful medium. They open up a window on experience of conflict and its legacy and its impact across different societies and different communities globally. It's not only the objects themselves, it's the relationships that come with them, which we feel are so important and so valuable. The communities and the people that created the textiles, their stories, their experiences. And that's something that we hope to be able to, to build on and to, in that sense, protect the legacy and the care and thought and sensitive consideration that's gone into their uh, the development of the collection. You know, we are now the custodians of 14 items. We take that responsibility very seriously and we hope we can really build and extend the important principles that underpin the collection. pieces go and stay, but what they have created is this teamwork. I feel that it's almost like part of the mission accomplished, to secure that they will have a home and that the people who receive it have worked with us and are not receiving a package. They are receiving real pieces, pieces that have a life and with whom we have been in relationship for years. So I feel that it's, it's in trust that they go, and I absolutely feel that the trust are being received. 